Kentucky AM 1400 Radio, live and worldwide on Vegas Video Network. This show is about sports, sports betting. My name is Scott Pritchard. I'm a professional sports better handicapper featured on my site, Pritchardspicks.com, VegasInsider.com, RefPicks.com. I'm joined by Brett Grant. Wow, I can't keep track of who my co-host, Mark Hayes, was outstanding. You have a lot to live up to, my friend. I, well, I taught him everything he knows. Well, that's a good comeback. I mean, the other way Mark around. Mark was great. I well, think I'm, I'm going to be out of a job. It's going to be well, the Brett Mark, Mark was show. A, he was a safety for UNLV. He's, he's <laughs> hit me against the wall a few times. But, Is that uh, right? Oh, yeah, he likes to uh, walk across the... I'll walk across the office. He says, you're going across the middle. You've got to pay the price. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he mentioned that he graduated from UNLV. He didn't tell me he played football. He, he probably played. was in that game where I got hosed, my bad beat, the UNLV, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah, I was driving in. I heard you tell that story. Okay. All I right. remember that game vividly. We're Very asking well. that the viewers, the listeners, the studio line is open, 702-221-7283. Live chat up and running. Again, the studio line, 702-221-7283. We would love for you to continue to reach out to us here on the network. Email us at oddscouple at vegasvideonetwork.com. That's oddscouple at vegasvideonetwork.com. Also, we would love to hear your voice on our show. Go to, we have web-based voicemail on our site, Vegas Video Network. Right-hand side, there is a red bar click there middle of the page green bar hit start recording we do have live chat up and running if you do miss us live no worries reach out to us on vegas video network youtube itunes roku before we get to are you kidding me i want to bring in the big fat wheel we have a wheel it's time we to spin. have spin to win we're honing in on a baseball game the total is eight dodgers taking on the angels the smart better bets with their head, never their heart. Check your emotions, check your ego at the door. I have to say that I am forced to make an argument for the over or the under, depending upon what the wheel says. Brett automatically has to argue for the other side because the smart better knows you should be well-versed no matter you're betting the over, the under, the side. Who do I have? Uh, Los Angeles. Oh, wait. Oh, great. Oh, wait. It's I mean, the Los Angeles Angels or the Los I Angeles Dodgers. I guarantee Los Angeles. Or the Gene Autry's. It's you have the Dodgers. You have the Irving Magic Johnson Dodgers. Well, we're looking at the over under eight in the Angels Dodgers game. Okay. So I need to know. Okay. Flip oh, well. a coin. Give me the over or the under. Do we have this on the <laughs> it wheel? It just says Dodgers and Angels. Is that right? Okay, so we're gonna go over. I under. love Los Angeles. I'll tell you what. Since it's the Dodgers, they play unders. I'll give you the under. I'm going under. I'll give you. That's under. great. The Angels are a dead over team, but I'll sell the under. <laughs> All right, eight. Is the number I like the under, or I'm going to present value with the under because history has a way of repeating itself. The Angels, they've been a dead over team. No team in all of baseball have cashed more over tickets than the Angels. But recently, current form says just the opposite. The fact that the Angels yesterday shut out. Zero runs, nine innings with that great lineup, one through nine scored zero. We know that Dodger Stadium, you were just there. Yep. They're not playing there, though. They're playing in Los Angeles, play, Anaheim. They, play they Anaheim. played in the Los big, Angeles yesterday. They okay. The big A. Right, exactly. What did you call me? I said, <laughs> I called you the big A. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm an artwork. All right. That's so A-A. this game has moved. Uh, yesterday it was in Los Angeles. Dodgers. Correct. We have interleague play going on, and a lot of these games are switching over to the opposing team's home team right. uh, field. So the Angels are hosting, okay? <clears throat> but I still like the under here, and here's why. Yesterday, three zip, granted, Dodger Stadium, pitcher friendly park, but to hold that team to no runs, current form dictates that I don't see how nine runs will be scored in this game. Looking at today's pitching matchup, I'm looking at the lefty versus the righty. Weaver, the star, is back. And Capuano, uh, Capuano uh, a good left-handed pitcher. Uh, looking at the whip factor for both of these guys, 1.46 versus 1.38. Nothing to write home about. But Weaver, we know, is the ace for the Angels. Eight under. I see some value. Well, I think on the other side, if you look at the total – uh, from the over standpoint, when a guy typically comes off of the disabled list, he's not normally in great form. And I watched Chris Capuano on Friday night against the Cardinals in person, and he was hammered around. He is a crafty lefty, uh, but the Angels are loaded with very good right-handed bats. Here's a couple of trends for you. The Dodgers in their last 16 games, when they held their opponents to two runs or less the game before, which they did last night, 
The next game is 12-3-1 to the over. So there's a, a trend there. Also, the Dodgers are 8-3 and three in their last 11 games as an underdog to the over. But I think in this spot, when you look at the Angels at home, uh, they faced a very good lefty yesterday in the Korean who just absolutely shut him down, Mr. I can't even pronounce his name. R-Y-U. Ru. 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 Speaking's my life. Yeah. Ru. 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 Yeah. He's very good, though. That's all i got to say. Chris Capuano is not that good. Uh, and I, from an over standpoint, the Dodgers swing the bats a little bit better. And I really, Adrian Gonzalez has been terrific the last four or five games. As much as we Crawford bagged on, off, man, as much well. we bagged on Jeff Camp the day before, Adrian Gonzalez has been terrific. So I look for some offense in this game. Jeff like Kemp? Game. Really? Jeff right, Kemp? Kemp? Jeff Kemp, the old giant. <laughs> Matt Kemp. <laughs> I was a big Too Jeff Kemp, Kemp fan. How about not Sean Kemp? He's got children You're all over the world. You're living in the past. Let it go. Move on. <laughs> it's Matt, Matt Kemp. See, I already forgot about it. I forgot his name already. So we have the Dodgers taking on the Angels. I trust that we're broadcasting that game today. I would trust that we would be as well. We broadcast the Clipper games. Well, we're going to wait till November now. Right. We broadcast the Clipper games on KSHP AM 1400 radio here in Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. We broadcast the Dodger games, the Dallas Cowboy games, the BYU football games, and let us not forget the odds couple. How cool is this show? It's awesome. And we could change hosts on the fly. I see that. We even, yeah, we did it all. So if I want to go to Malibu, Billionaire Beach, Carbon Beach, in Malibu for a day or two. We've got Anthony Padilla, who will step up. We have to get him out of bed. But right. Mark is here every day, so it's nice to know if I want to hit the sure. road for a day or two, because I love going to the Big A. You mean you're not taking me with you? Not this time, because I wasn't invited. You went to the Dodgers I took for the weekend. Family. I well, took I thought wife. I was I family. Am I not family? Well, I don't know if the car was large enough for another well, person. Well, that's a good point. You yeah. don't drive a Prius, do you? <laughs> no. I drive you... one of those uh, golf carts. It's, a... <laughs> <laughs> it's called a smart car. <laughs> You could drive a Hummer, and it probably wouldn't be big enough to accommodate me or at no. least my ego. That's true. So, they would have to ride shotgun, I think, or side saddles, they would say. You're listening to The Odds <laughs> Couple on KSHP Live and Worldwide Vegas Video Network. Scott Pritchard, Pritchardspicks.com. Brett Grant, GM here at KSHP. Great to have you with us. Live chat up and running on the network, uh, as well as the studio line, 702-221-7283. Let's talk about... Frustration. Sports, sports betting, you don't have to look far. Certainly don't have to look far in my life. It's an everyday occurrence to find frustration. Are you kidding me? Well, I'm going to start uh, with Yankees fans have to be feeling a little bit of frustration for the first time ever. Ever, Scott. Here's the amazing thing. Last night, the Yankees went in. They're at uh, City Field in Queens. A long trip for them from the Bronx to Harlem to the Queen to Queens. Uh, to play the interleague game, the Yankees and the Mets. Yankees lead one nothing. They go to the bottom of the ninth inning. They bring in their all-world closer, the future Hall of Famer, Mariano Rivera. And for the first time in 700 career outings as a closer, let me say that again, for the first time in 700 career chances as a closer, Mariano Rivera did not get anybody out. It's never happened before. Are you kidding me that that streak lasted that long? That is amazing to me about how great Mariano Rivera has become and has been over his career. And here's what happened. Here's the really bad part. He'll never do this again. He's on his rocking chair tour around all the bar <laughs> ballparks, right? He threw out the first pitch at the opposing ballpark yesterday. And unfortunately, it was the best pitch he threw of the night. <laughs> so... He probably won't be throwing out any more first pitches, but for the first time in 700 career save opportunities, he got nobody out. That's amazing and a testament to how great he's been. So are you kidding me that he's been that good? That's a great, great observation. I mean, I hope that we will focus on the 19 years that he's dominated the Mets in New York as opposed to his last outing at Citi Field in New York City. Well, I just, I mean, I can't imagine anybody, anybody going 700 times to the mound and not at one point failing along the way of not getting somebody out. Everybody gets rocked at some point. Everybody has a bad day. He hasn't had one until yesterday. That's it's amazing. amazing. You know, I've talked before on this show that Brett and myself or Mark and myself, Anthony and, and I, we do not rehearse. We want to go on the fly. Interesting that we have the same similar one and the same, are you kidding me? Because I'm talking about Rivera as well. Okay. 
<laughs> and my information states that, and as as you already mentioned, uh, three straight hits, first time in 19 years in his career, blew a save uh, at the Mets. Third in a 1,072 appearances that he did not record an out. First since 2008, the other two he faced only a single batter. Now, one blown save and 19 chances this season, that in and of itself is pretty impressive. But when you look at the the numbers, it's outstanding. I mean, you said 700, but the exact number, his first without getting an out in 730 career save situations. 730. It's, it's phenomenal. I didn't mean to shortchange him. Well, Those I mean, we're minutes. all about credibility here. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, we, we, I mean, I only say that because I know you'd call me out if I was off. No, no, it's all good. So 700 is, 730 is even more impressive oh, than yeah. 700. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it really is amazing. And you mentioned the other two. You're thinking a lot of times you're coming into a save situation. They're bringing you in, in the fire, bases loaded, guy in scoring position, tie game, up by one, whatever. You got to get that guy out immediately. It's only the third time, right, it's ever happened in right. his career right. that he didn't get anybody out. Um, and this is the first time in 730 times since it happened. That's just amazing to the testament to how good he's been over that time. There's been some great closers, you know, all of, and some Hall of Fame guys like a Bruce Souter and a, and a Dennis Eckersley and, and guys like Goose Gossage and Lee Smith and, and, you know, Raleigh Finger, some great, great closers. I mean, Rivera just tops them all, and it's not even close. Mariano Rivera. Are you kidding me? I want to back up for a second because my good buddy and co-host Brett Grant, a little bit late today, in the fire, making things happen for this network. We love you for that. I I know I'm sure, I trust it was business related. But I, I'm so happy that Mark it Hayes was, yeah, manned business, up, business that up. I was going to be sleeping in the couch if I wasn't there. <laughs> it was my, You did the right thing. Yeah. My daughter's a senior in high school, and today was the at school was the final all school assembly where the seniors were awarded uh, with some really cool prizes. And she had to be there for that. So I had to be there. That's great for that. You did the right thing. Yeah. No doubt about it. But I, I held off on a specific segment. What say you right. the second part of what say you, because the Kings are King. The reason I say this is because we're talking about the LA Kings. Oh, I thought big we were talking win. Sacramento for a second, big game yeah. last night. All right. In hockey. And, I made a judgment call, management call. No one knows less than me when it comes to <laughs> hockey. So I was doing this segment for you, and something tells me my good buddy Mark Hayes probably might know even less than what I know about hockey. So in fairness to the viewers and the listeners, I wanted to wait for you, my friend. So, the kings it. are king. What say you? Well, you guys pre- pretty much prefer ice or surrounded by your vodka. That's it, true. That's exactly. It, right? Yes. Well, I tell you what. Uh, Jonathan Quick was absolutely Incredible last night. They're searching for somebody who commits the the greatest larceny around the country. Uh, Look no further than the guy in goal for the L.A. Kings. Jonathan Quick was outstanding last night with a a couple of incredible saves to preserve a 2-1 victory over the San Jose Sharks. Uh, You know, uh, Williams got both goals for the Kings last night. Again, some questionable, Justin Williams, some questionable officiating, but the Kings were over able to uh, overcome the officials, overcome the Sharks. And what you don't see very often, Scott, in any sport is where the home team wins all seven games, and that happened in this particular series. So the Kings, with home ice advantage, uh, have won and have not lost a home game yet in the postseason this year. They are the defending Stanley Cup champs, and they'll get a chance to defend their Western Conference championship against either the Chicago Blackhawks or the Detroit Red Wings, who play Game 7 tonight. First time those two teams have gotten together for a Game 7 in about 50 years uh, at Chicago, at the United Center. I was going to say Chicago Stadium uh, coming up tonight in another Game 7. Home ice, all seven games decided by the home team. Game 7 tonight, home team. I talk about... Oftentimes in sports, my favorite team is H-O-M-E. I like having the officials in my back pocket come the moment of truth. I think it's prevalent, we know, in football. Big difference if the Atlanta Falcons have to go to Lambeau Field or if they if the Packers have to play indoors in a dome right. on turf. Same way in basketball, distinct home court advantage because you basically have eight against five late. The officials uh, tend to favor the home team because they don't want 20,000 hecklers 
uh, on their back. Now, in baseball, I think it's less prevalent come postseason. But I think in hockey, I know that's been documented, and you just illustrated that again, all seven games decided by the home team. Does that mean you like the home team tonight? Well, in the in this series tonight, uh, the Blackhawks have won on the road, and the, and the Red Wings have won on the road. So it has not been as prevalent in this particular series as it was in the other. And it doesn't happen always in hockey where the road teams are not – winning games I you know tonight I, I think typically a game seven is a like you say in the NBA you play in mud you don't really play in mud on the ice but you play a much more tougher defensive style of hockey it's much more difficult teams are not given as much room to maneuver as they would be at other times and I think that if you look at the game tonight at a total of five um, I think you got to look at the under in the game and look at both teams very strong defensively very strong goaltending the the Red Wings didn't play great in Game 6 defensively. I think you'll see a much better effort from them defensively, especially if they expect to go in and win the game tonight. This is the part of the show where Brett Grant and I together put money into your pocket as we together put you on the right side. Let me start off with what we did yesterday. I won. I get to smile, right? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We won. I had the Cardinals yesterday uh, against the uh, Kansas City Royals. The Cardinals actually went off as an underdog in this spot. I've been talking to people, Scott, back and forth, and I guess about 52% of the money went on to a team that was 1-9 in, in their last 10 games. And that, to me, the line just didn't make any sense. You have one of the hottest teams in baseball, a surging team versus a struggling team, and yet the struggling team was the favorite in the game against the team with the best record in baseball. So I, I didn't, it didn't make any sense to me. So I thought, in my mind, the Cardinals were a great play yesterday. My play today, honestly, Jacob, you got to put it up on the screen. I have no idea what I gave you last night. I forgot all about it. I gave you a game, but I forgot what it was. Uh, there it is. I'm going to go to the Nationals and the Orioles. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I played. Right. I just don't remember who they're playing. But you played more than one game. It's yes. tough to pinpoint. What, what did I give out on the show? Exactly. Because you played like five games. Exactly. That was the thing. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I like the underdog again in this spot. The Orioles have a struggling starter on the mound against Jordan Zimmerman, who's been absolutely fantastic for the Washington Nationals. In fact, the only two games he's lost this year, he's 8-2 and two overall. The only two games he's lost are games that were during the day. So at night, he's a perfect 7-0. and He's actually very good on the road. On the other side, the Orioles starter struggles at home. He's one of those guys who's a victim of his team not scoring runs for him at home. So I think, again, there's value today with the Nationals at even money against Baltimore in their interleague matchup. I like the Nets. Before we get to my right side, I'd like to recap what I did yesterday. I've been on a tear. That's T-E-A-R. Not tear, but tear. Been on a tear. 13-4, and four, my last 17 plays, played a under in the baseball game yesterday, a day game, the Rockies game, under 9, it fell 2-1, winner, winner, chicken dinner. How do these sports books stay open? Why can't they all be that easy? Right. Today? Yeah, that was yesterday. I mean, that was history. Today's game is a mystery. What have you done for us lately? No one cares what you did yesterday. The plays are documented here on Vegas Video Network. 13 wins, 14 losses, playing NBA basketball sides, totals, Major League Baseball totals. Occasionally, I'll step out and play a baseball team, small favorite. That's what I have today looking at a baseball game. The A's taking on the San Francisco Giants interleague baseball action yesterday, last night in Oakland. The A's... Played well. They knocked off the Giants. Now they're traveling seven miles across the Golden Gate Bridge to play the Giants in San Francisco as they host the A's. Lincecum is going for the Giants. I see value with San Francisco. They just play inspired baseball, small ball. I love the way this team plays. Lincecum concerns me. He's up, he's down, a little bit inconsistent. I do not like randomness, but I like the Giants at home, National League rules, minus 20 cents, I think is cheap. So my play for the day, the right side, San Francisco Giants, minus 120 listed pitchers. I want to back up for a second. You talked about your game yesterday. The money, again, was against you. Right. You were right. The move was wrong. Long-term, bad habit to get into. I respect the marketplace, but also I wonder, my friend... <laughs> How objective you can be. Well, I respect very. your opinion, but you're a St. Louis boy. Well, okay, but you're taking a Cardinal team 
that had, yes, the only thing I can even think of, Scott, to be honest with you, was the Cardinals had a rookie starter on the mound. But well, that's a big deal. Okay, well, okay, <laughs> but we're playing the Royals. Well, that's okay, and that's that guy was one and zero. He played pitched very, very well. He's got a great curveball, great change. If the Cardinals have, by the way, tomorrow the Cardinals will start their eighth rookie of the season on the mound. This is a team with the best record in baseball. Eighth rookie. These guys are all fireballers, great pitchers. I, I understand what you're saying, but. The pitcher wasn't batting. We get an extra bat into the lineup as well. We're playing the Royals for crying right, out loud. Right. No, it was a great it call. It just didn't make any I sense. I respect to me. the call. I'm just and, looking and, at and current won, form. But I was just the, looking at form. How can a team that's one and nine in their la- and falling like a rock versus a surging team be a favorite? It just didn't make any sense to me. Well, it's all predicated on the starting pitching. And as you right. said, the rookie pitched a good game. They have another. Rookie, they're, they're a young team. They're a talented team. They're in a tough division. They're not only do they right. have the best record in baseball. Reds and Pirates are great too. Right but now. yeah, exactly. So I mean, it's a long season. We'll see how it plays out. I know you have a future on your Cardinals. I do. I think you're emotionally attached, and I don't blame you. I love I the fans. Am. I'm not I, that. <laughs> you know what? It's a lot better to be emotionally attached to the Cardinals than say Kansas City. That's true. <laughs> or <laughs> most anybody other than the Yankees. <laughs> This is the Odds Couple on KSHP AM 1400 Radio, Las Vegas. We're live and worldwide, Vegas Video Network. Catch us Monday through Friday, 10A to 11A Las Vegas time. For my good buddy Brett Grant and Mark Hayes, my name is Scott Pritchard. Good luck and goodbye.